What's up folks, Nintendial here once again, and I've got a top 5 video for you. If you read the title, that's pretty obvious. It's uh, 5 adventure games that I think are the best on Super Nintendo. Now this is just my opinion, nobody else's opinion. If my stupid list sucks, then you guys can bitch at me all you want in the comment section. Uh, however, the question that's probably on everybody's mind is, how do you define an adventure game? Um, an adventure game to me is something that's non-linear, uh, or at least you can go back and forth a lot. There's not necessarily levels, and uh, you can get items and equip yourself and get stronger as you go. And uh, they can be side-scrolling, they could be overhead, but either way, an adventure game is a little bit different from an RPG because you don't generally gain experience. Um, so therefore you don't level up, but you do upgrade your character by buying things, by buying things or upgrading things. But uh, yeah, that's how I would define an adventure game. Um, so I'm just going to give you top five games that I think are the best on Super Nintendo. And uh, I guess you guys can let me know what you think. If uh, you think they're good games, bad games, or if you think I missed something completely that's awesome. Uh, the first game I have for you guys is Super Adventure Island 2. Super Adventure Island 2 is a game that I actually just recently got into. Um, a buddy of mine traded it to me. I got the uh, complete in box copy, actually. And... Um, I didn't really think much of it when I saw game previews for it, or once I popped it in for just a second just to test it, I was like, okay, it looks pretty cool. But then a couple weeks later, I actually started playing it, and uh, wow, it is really good. It's kind of like Faxanadu, or kind of like uh, the second Zelda for Nintendo. It's a side-scrolling adventure game, and uh, it's actually very much like Legend of Zelda uh, 2, or, you know, for the Nintendo because you have an overworld map and uh, you get in random battles and just like that game you just kind of side scroll left or right to get out of it and there's enemies there and um, and then there's destinations to go on the map that are actual big levels or areas I guess um, I guess this game would kind of qualify as having levels but kind of not really and you do have to go back and forth a lot Anyways, really good game, awesome graphics, the music is, the music is just really catchy and uh, something you just want to keep listening to. It's almost worth playing the game just to listen to the soundtrack. It's just a gem, it really is, and I predict this game is going to be really, really hard to find soon, uh, or at least for a good price, because it seems to be quite sought after lately. But uh, Super Adventure Island 2, awesome game, definitely one of my favorites, that's number five. Number four... It's a really hard to get title, uh, but a very, very good game. A game that I wanted for a very long time until I finally got it, and that is uh, Evo Search for Eden for Super Nintendo. And uh, obviously for Super Nintendo, this is a Super Nintendo video. I do videos for all kinds of consoles, so sometimes I have a tendency of saying what system it's for no matter what. <laughs> Anyways, Evo Search for Eden is a strange game that is also kind of in the same vein as Super Adventure Island and the fact that there's a small overworld map but really there's no enemies or anything you're just going from area to area and you can backtrack and um, it's all about evolution you start out as a fish and you kill other fish and you kind of get experience points kind of sort of but you use those points to upgrade certain parts of your body and therefore get stronger in certain areas like your jaws or your dorsal fin or, you know, all kinds of things to make you faster, uh, repel attacks better, or uh, actually stronger. So it's pretty interesting. And then once you're done with the fish level, you are like a dinosaur, and then there's other areas. It's a very, very interesting game, a really sought after game. I personally love it. There are some people that really do not like the game, they feel it's a little too slow. It is also kind of got a learning curve. If you don't select the right things to upgrade on the game, what happens is you end up being too slow and maybe overpowered for a boss or maybe you end up being uh you know too fast and not powerful enough and yeah it's kind of a balance that you have to kind of work with but uh yeah evo search for eden is definitely a pretty darn cool game just really hard to get um okay so number three is definitely an awesome game amazing game uh but there are actually three kind of parts to this game. This is kind of a three-parter, um, but my favorite is actually the first game, and that is uh, Soul Blazer. And if you don't know, Soul Blazer is loosely connected with uh, Illusion of Gaia and Terra Enigma, which is only released in Europe. 
but uh, and maybe Japan too. I don't know. But uh, Soul Blazer is an overhead adventure game, and uh, you're basically like rescuing people and opening up new areas. And uh, every time you defeat all the enemies on a screen, you get upgrades to yourself, like a stronger weapon or a stronger defense or more hit points. And uh, no experience, no leveling up or anything like that, but it's a really interesting game, and it's one of those games where I just literally could not put it down. When I got Soul Blazer, uh, it was one of the few times I bought a Super Nintendo game on Amazon because I knew it was going up in price and I really, really wanted to pay, uh, play it. So I coughed up the uh, 35 or 40 bucks that it was at the time and uh, got me a copy. And man, I beat it in like three or four days because I just could not stop playing it. It's not necessarily a really short game. It's not the longest game, but it's just that I couldn't stop playing it. I just beat the crap out of that game. So, so fun. Uh, yeah, I can't recommend Soul Blazer enough. And if you like Soul Blazer or Illusion of Gaia, check out Terra Enigma. Terra Enigma is amazing. It's available on uh, ROMs, and you can actually get carts, uh, repro carts of it. I personally have a repro cart of Terra Enigma. It's a freaking amazing game and totally worth having. Okay, that brings us to number two. Number two, number two. Such a good game, and definitely on probably most people's list. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. This is the first adventure, true adventure game I ever played on the Super Nintendo and it's still one of the best. It is such a good game. It's hard to deny what a great game it is. Just the music and the look of the game, the feel of the game, how many characters are in it, how many hidden items there are. If you are not familiar with this game, it's an overhead adventure and uh, there's a light world and a dark world and um, it's just an amazing game. I mean, there's a lot of Zelda games, and they're all good in their own right, if you ask me. Some better than others. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is the best Zelda game there is, in my opinion. I don't think it's ever been topped, and I really don't think it's ever going to be topped. Um, I know one game that I think is a little underrated that I love that comes very close is Minish Cap. So if you've never played Legend of Zelda Minish Cap on Game Boy Advance, give that a try. That's a really good game. I mentioned that in another video at one point. Uh, anyways, Link to the Past, I mean, just the graphics are so good. They're so crisp and clean and animated so well. Link's looks so good slashing his sword. I mean, it's just like an upgrade from the Nintendo version in every single sense of the word. They made everything a hundred times better. And when I was a teenager, it was just mind-blowing. It was such an amazing experience to see the transition from the first Legend of Zelda to the second Legend of Zelda and being like, ugh. And then going from this and being like, yes, this is amazing. Not to mention the Game Boy games are actually pretty good too. But uh, yeah, Link to the Past, hands down. Best Legend of Zelda game ever, and uh, number four for top adventure games on Super Nintendo. Now, number one, best adventure game on Super Nintendo, in my opinion, should be fairly obvious if you guys are wondering, well, where's that one cart that I really love? Where the hell is Super Metroid? There's Super Metroid, it's right freaking there. Super Metroid has to be the single best adventure game on the system, and... Uh, arguably one of the best adventure games ever made. I mean, there are some crazy good adventure games. If you count the uh, Metroidvania games as being adventure games and not RPGs, I'd say Aria of Sorrow and uh, Symphony of the Night are up there with Super Metroid, but Super Metroid was the first one to be that good. <laughs> to, to have so many items, it's such a such an uh, adventure, I mean, in the truest sense of the word, and it's so dark, and you feel so alone. I've mentioned that in videos before, that that is the reason that Metroid games are kind of cool, is the fact that you're just alone in this gigantic world, and it's a giant maze, you're surrounded by enemies, and you are absolutely alone. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty darn cool. The atmosphere for a Super Nintendo game is uh, fairly dark. You don't really think of Super Nintendo games having really dark or oppressive atmospheres, but uh, this game's a little bleak sometimes. It's pretty awesome. It's God, the music is so good. It's so damn good. It's haunting. The very first melody for the intro is haunting as hell and melancholy and just amazing. It just sounds so good, and uh, I can't say enough good things about Super Metroid. Uh, just like Legend of Zelda, the one on Super Nintendo is my favorite game. I mean, the Super Nintendo is my favorite console. But, uh, yeah, Super Metroid is leaps and bounds better than the first Metroid. It was such a step up. 
Um, I am a huge fan of Metroid 2 for Game Boy, which is kind of underrated in my opinion, but it's still, Super Metroid blows that out of the water, so <laughs> that's all I have for you guys. Uh, my top five Super Nintendo Adventure games, what do you guys think? Did I miss anything obvious? There were a couple games that I really do like that seem to be a little underrated that nobody really talks about. Uh, Disney's Goof Troop and uh, Adam's Family Values, I think it's called? Yeah, Adam's Family Values. Both really good games, but games that I haven't really played a lot of, so I'm not going to give a whole lot of judgment passed on those, but uh, definitely I mentioned Illusion of Gaia and Terra Enigma, those are great games as well, but uh, maybe I missed some glaring, obvious adventure game, let me know, I'm kind of curious, because there doesn't seem like that was an easy subject to come up with, I, I don't hear many adventure games being talked about and sometimes they just get lumped in with the RPG so yeah leave a comment let me know what you think and uh, if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos by me uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button it's down there and it's red and it says subscribe that's all I have for you guys thank you very much for watching and keep rocking the retro games